Hey everyone, Tom here from Ludicrous Feed. I've got the Kia EV6 GT for the week. Uh, looking forward to showing you uh, all the best bits of it. Okay, so uh, there's the screen there, 98% state of charge, 387 kilometers left of range left. And then moving across to the center screen, it says the same thing as well. All right, let's head off. Okay, so we're on the open road now, uh, doing a test of the uh, Kia EV6 GT. And I'm just going to run through uh, information on the screen here, and then we'll talk about uh, cruise control uh, and other functions as well. So um, on the screen here, you can uh, control it using the buttons here on uh, the steering wheel. So information I've got now is the trip computer uh, after recharging, uh, accumulated information, and then the drive information for this drive, and then back to recharging. And then this menu button here, you can switch between things like the compass, uh, and then the uh, energy usage, so at the moment it's just using the rear motor and then if you uh, regen brake, for example like this, you can see the energy going back into the car like that. And then that's using uh, both front and rear motors. If I want to stick cruise control back on because I broke it, uh, you can press this one here. I'm sorry, and then yeah, I'm on cruise now and then you can just flick up like that to increase the speed or you can long press to go up by 10 kilometers an hour. The speed limit's 100 kilometers an hour, so I might leave it on 100 for now. And then flicking between menus again, this is uh, the, I guess, the showing the sensors there uh, on the road. It's not like Tesla Autopilot where you've got real-time information of the car uh, in space. This is just a static image. And then you can um, adjust how close you want uh, to follow the lead car. So there we go, that's distance following there. And this graphic up here is what we're showing you in a different way. And then back to uh, the information. Um, and then you can also adjust your drive mode. So um, if I want to go on sport mode like that, I can. And that just changes how many kilometers left on range. On eco mode, 202. And then drive normal is 196 on 50%. Exactly 50% state of charge. So that's quite a good, uh, good timing there. And then down here, you've got the odometer then also the efficiency so currently we're running at 19.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and then the temperature as well and then real-time efficiency down here too um, you can also put it on GT mode which is this and then cruise control is taken off so you can't use cruise with uh, GT and you can also um, put on my drive mode which is more uh, customizable with uh, with how you want to drive your vehicle with uh, steering and all those kind of things put it back on GT for now uh, actually, I'll put it back on normal, then I can put cruise control on as I'm driving and talking. Let's put it back on. Yep, cruise. Back to 100. There we go. Um, other information, you can also uh, adjust uh, your regen as well. So. Oh, sorry, regen doesn't work when you're on cruise. So let me take it off cruise for a sec. There we go. So regen down here is level three at the moment. Use these paddles here to adjust. So that's on max regen. And if you don't like the regen, you can take it all off like that. So level zero, it's basically just uh, cruising along. And there's a bit of recuperation there on level three. Let's put cruise back on. Um, you can also uh, put lane assist on like that. The steering wheel icon is off there back on and that's lane keeping there so let's just have a, a bit of a play with uh, cruise control with lane assist at the moment so I've got my hands just lightly on the wheel um, I've got to say I, I still stand by the fact that Tesla Autopilot is still the best in the game having driven all these EVs this one's not too bad the EGMP uh, uh, auto steer um, it's kind of on par with the BYD I think Auto 3 it's okay, but I, I still don't have that much confidence in it. I certainly wouldn't uh, you know, take my hands off the wheel at all. Not, not, that, not that I would with Tesla, but there's a bit more confidence with my with the Tesla Autopilot. Uh, I find that this it does veer off a little bit uh, and, and comes close to the lane markings if you're not careful. So certainly uh, not autonomous by any means, so pay attention at all times, of course. Uh, and also you can see whether the car is, uh, you know, with uh, this side here, you can see whether it's using regen or using power to, uh, to propel itself. A um, bit of a comment also with the center screen here. 
Um, I've got it on Apple CarPlay, so I'm using Waze. Those who follow my channel will know that I like Waze because it's user populated, uh, puts up hazards, other things like uh, you know police patrol as well. Also, um, if you don't like to use Waze or Apple CarPlay, you can use the native navigation. I'll just put it back onto um, just put it back onto the native screen here. The navigation, I really am not a fan of the eGMP nav. It's really quite cumbersome. Um, and just a comment about the, the menu in general, it's, I don't know, I just don't like the UX as much as I do in other vehicles. Just a comment. Uh, for example, if I, if I want to navigate to, say, Melbourne, um, I know it's a long way, but just as an example, you know, this doesn't actually integrate with the car's battery management system, so it doesn't actually tell you where to stop. Which is, I don't know, the whole point of uh, EV nav is to tell you where to stop, right, for charging. So that's one problem. And then to, to navigate there, you, you've got to like press a few buttons to get to where you need to uh, before, you know, you um, get there. So whereas Tesla nav, put it in and then away you go. So a bit more cumbersome there. And the graphics I don't quite like as much. I know it's, it's personal, but it's just not as, as nice uh, as, say, for example, Polestar. Uh, uses Google Maps and also Tesla uses Google Maps as well. And on the right hand side you can uh, flick through like that, the different options there, uh, battery range and battery state of charge and the time there too. And then back to Apple CarPlay, back to Waze. Okay so that's a bit of an overview uh, while we're driving uh, on the road here and then we'll touch base again when we do uh, a um, do a walk around. I'll just do one more thing and that's a uh, lane change like this. So you see the blind spot monitor come up there on the right and then when you switch back in the blind spot monitor will uh, show you on the left hand side. Okay and then to uh, cut back in the left lane, left lane like that, you'll see the blind spot monitor come up again on the center screen. Okay so let's do a look around of the internal of the car. So uh, yep Got the green trim around the steering wheel. This is kind of the signature look for the GT with the GT button here. We'll be doing an acceleration test later on with the GT mode. Uh, got the sides here. We've got uh, you know that sort of chrome trim for the door handles, and then we've got uh, you know the usual buttons here: steering, uh, sorry, uh, mirror controls here, lock, unlock, and then windows, uh, child lock. And then I'll just uh, show you guys as well, the Meridian sound system. I think there are 14 speakers all up throughout the vehicle. Uh, deep door bins. Um, then you've got um, the front latch here. We'll have a look at that in a second. And then you've got uh, illumination control for internal lighting, uh, charge port, boot control, uh, park brake, traction control on or off, uh, air conditioning vents. Down here, performance pedals. Right, footrest. Then let's have a look at the steering wheel and controls a bit closer in detail. So there you go, the controls we talked about earlier. And then in here you've got the paddles for the region. Hopefully it focuses. There we go. There. And then paddles here on this side as well. Sorry about that. Focus. There we go. Um, and then you've got on the right hand side indicators on the right, light control. And then on the left hand side, got wiper controls and it is rain sensing, which is great. Uh, no rear wipers, just letting you know. Okay, so uh, looking at the rest of the cabin, so uh, this sort of hard plastic throughout, um, good build quality, can't complain there. Um, and head up display, I um, don't know whether you can see that, I'll just have a look. Head up display there, I'm not sure whether you can see the actual no, you put, oh, there we go. You can just see it there. So speed uh, and other things like that. And if you've got nav, it also shows turn by turn, which is very handy. Okay, and then now we've, we've seen the eGMP platform a few times now, and this is a variation of what it is, which is the center sort of screen here divided into two, one for the middle, one for the uh, driver cluster here, and then followed by vents down here with the center uh, uh, hazard lights and then you've got some sort of variation in the theme where you've got either buttons or touchpad here for uh, the controls here and then down here you've got the center console with more controls in this situation you've got heat seat heaters uh, steering wheel uh, heater the on button which 
I don't like, as you guys might know if you follow me, I don't like an on button in cars. It should be on all the time when you step in. Then you've got the dial, four gears, which is great for an EV, that's all you need. Uh, then you've got uh, other buttons down here, auto hold, which is good for hill holding for EVs. And then you've got the camera control, which I'll go through in a second. Uh, cup holders, the keys, and then an extra little pocket down here. Then you've got the charger here as well. And then a deep, uh, another little cabin down here as well. Um, and then down here, which is one thing I like about the eGMP um, platform is there's always some sort of storage space down here, which is great for me as a content creator. I can put my cameras down here, but obviously I can, other things too you can put down here, like, you know, takeaway and whatnot. Um, and then you can stick in a 12 volt um, plug there. Good for camping, which this car has too. It's got camping mode. You can leave that on while the car is off. And then you've got uh, a USB-C port there. And then some more um, USB ports up here. There's USB-A there. And that's the USB-C. And these are for plugging into Apple CarPlay, Apple Android via wire. Um, no wireless at this stage. And let's go through uh, some more controls here. So like I said, variation on the theme for uh, most GMP cars. In this situation, oh, by the way, you've got this sort of green pattern here. That's sort of uh, what Kia is known for, that green shade. So here you've got uh, air conditioning controls with tactile buttons, and you've got more controls for the demisters, auto climate in low, medium and high setting, uh, recirculate without, more climate control settings here, driver only button, I know some people like that, just having the driver only, on and off, syncing it, you've got uh, or syncing between passenger and you, the driver. Um, and then you've also got controls here to, to control the uh, radio and entertainment system, or entertainment system, so. Uh, if you don't like touching the screen, that's another option here for you. You see how the dials also change depending on which setting you're on. So file tune, uh, volume power, as opposed to uh, climate on this side. All right, let's talk a bit more about the screen up here. As I said in the drive video, I'm not a huge fan of the menu system. It just doesn't feel as uh, slick as other systems, but everything is there that you need. Uh, we've gone through the map. Let's go through the EV controls, because that's unique to EVs, of course, to unique to the EV system. Um, you can see how much more range you get without the air conditioning on. B2L controls are there as well. And you can set your de um, departure time and schedule charging from here as well. And uh, you can also set the charge limit for AC and DC charging. Um, the charging current is not as discrete as Tesla, where you can set the amperage to a fine uh, amp or number of amps. Here you can use only have three settings, maximum, reduced, and minimum. Uh, battery conditioning for DC charging, yes, good. And utility mode uh, for charging devices in camp mode. That's, but that's basically camp mode. And recuperation, you can have that either strong, medium, or soft. Uh, you, if you want your charger cable locked or unlocked when you're charging, or when it's finished, then you can have uh, EV sounds as well. You can also have some sort of, uh, uh, what's the word, augmented sound for uh, when you're driving, which I really don't like. It doesn't sound very good at all. See what I can find it for you. Uh, vehicle, here we go, drive. Active sound design, this is it. There you go. Let me know what you think about those sounds. Anyway, that's the noise of the uh, dynamic sound, which again, I'm not a big fan of. I just like the car's quiet. I agree with low uh, pedestrian warning sounds, and it, which this car has at low speed, and also it beeps uh, when you're in reverse too, so uh, good for uh, warning pedestrians you're around. Okay, and some more settings there. So we've gone through the settings before in previous videos, so check those out. I won't go through it all again today. It's all very same, same uh, compared to other GMP cars like the Ionic 5 uh, and also the Genesis as well. Okay, let's have a look around uh, the rest of the vehicle. So, um, up here you've got the usual sun visors, uh, ticket holder, mirror, lighting. Um, so you've got lighting controls here as well. Uh, and there's a sunshade too, so check this out. So if I press that, over there. So the blinds powered, and then you've got sunroof opening up as well. And yes, complaints uh, about Tesla not having this uh, in their vehicles, so. If this is what you want, then this car may be for you if you need a power sunshade. Okay, and then um, let's focus down here on the cameras, which I forgot to talk about. So if you want to activate the cameras, press this button here. 
that brings up here the cameras. So that's uh, the rear camera. You can have that view, this view, the sides, 360 view, like that. And then settings for the camera. So I've got to say, it's pretty handy uh, when you're parking. Uh, looks like I'm too close to the right side there, but you can sort of judge how close you are when you're parking uh, your vehicle or if you're coming close to an obstacle. All right, let's go through the second row. So this is how you uh, enter into the second row there. Uh, seat heaters, uh, window control, and then you've got that green uh, trim or the green stitching that's uh, synonymous with the GT brand right there. Then you've got headrests across all three, which are adjustable and looks pretty roomy and it is comfortable in there as well. Uh, so cloth trim, center one is, I think, some sort of vinyl. I don't think it's leather. Um, and then the floor is a flat floor, which I love because it's an EGMP, so it's uh, ground up EV. And then I'll just move my tissue box there. And you've got uh, more USB ports there, they're both USB-C. And because it's a GT, it's kind of got that sportier uh, look to it, so uh, it doesn't have uh, this sort of holder at the back behind the, the seats there. Something to note. Um, more speakers here for the Meridian sound. And it sounds pretty good, by the way. And some more air conditioning vents on both sides. And then I'll just untwist this so it looks nicer. Yeah, it's pretty comfy. And uh, there is the center console there. Uh, I thought that might have been a ski tunnel, so no, it's not. It's just a class for this thing. Um, got drink holders there. Pretty roomy for an armrest there. And the sunroof doesn't actually extend all the way to the back. It's just sort of stops between the two rows, which is okay. And then you've got some more light switches here which you can turn on and off like that, can you? No, they stay on. So I think, because yeah, the door's open. Okay, so the door's just shut there, and then you can turn it on manually too, like that. Okay, so this is me, uh, five foot nine, 175 cm, and about one fist from the roof. So yes, it is quite a high ride height, and you are quite close to the uh, roof or the ceiling of the second row. Okay, so a comment about the ride height. Um, it's certainly uh, a little bit higher than a usual sedan, certainly higher than the Model 3 ride height, um, probably a little bit lower than the Model Y ride height, so somewhere between the two vehicles. So uh, yeah, I think a lot of people do like that higher ride height. That's why SUVs are so popular, and this is a nice compromise. Okay, so let's go check out the front, or the front bonnet. Pull the latch, give it a click. I need to unlatch, yes I do. Okay, so there we go. And being an eGMP platform, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle by the way, then you've got to um, lift this up like that, and a very shallow uh, storage area. Probably put a couple of water, water bottles here maybe. Um, jackets perhaps, some towels, that's probably, probably about it. Maybe some devices, laptops. Um, I don't know why they'd be sticking laptops in there. But uh, yeah, that's it. And then to shut it, you just pull it down like this. Okay, that's it. All right, so let's check out the boot. So there's a button here. Let me just find it, there we go. Okay, beeps, lights, and then it goes up. And look, a divider, parcel shelf, or sort of divider between uh, the window and the Rest of the boot space for privacy. That's what's missing from a lot of wires, isn't it, in Australia? Um, there you go, storage space. And what's this? I guess that brings the seats down. Let's try that. Yep, so the seats go down like that. And there's one on this side as well, so let's pull that. Yep, so there it is 60 40 split. Uh, the 40 is on the driver's side, 60 on the passenger side. And just like the other eGMP cars, you can move this back to there, and that way you can bring the rear seats back as well for the other passengers to make a more comfortable ride for them. Okay, and then you've got some more uh, 12 volt plugs there. 
Got a tyre mobility kit. There's no spare tyre these days with a lot of EVs. And this acts as the charge port on this right side. Let's have a look to see what's underneath here. So it's equipped with a 10 amp charger and also a Type 2 EV cable. I don't know whether it comes standard or not. Maybe it's just the press car that comes with a Type 2 EV cable. But I would think it comes with a 10 amp charger. So that's good to know. Let's shut that. And you've got these protective uh, areas here to prevent scuffing. Okay, and then to shut it, there's the button there. Press that. There we go. And there we go, shutting for the Kia EV6 GT. Okay, so one more thing I want to say is, of course, the eGMP cars are known for their internal V2L, or V equal to load, uh, where you can plug in a uh, plug into that socket, which is capable of receiving 250 volts, 16 amps maximum. And there it is right there. You can uh, plug whatever you want in there. For example, like a hairdryer, I guess, uh, going to the beach, dry your hair. Uh, other things too, uh, maybe charging devices, whatever you want. Alright, so time for a walk around of the Kia EV6 GT. So, starting from the front, uh, they call this the tiger face look of the Kia uh, EV6 line. Uh, got a grill down the bottom there, cosmetic reasons obviously, you don't need a grill in an EV anymore. Uh, LED lights, let's walk around this way now, let's take a look. So the signature uh, brake calipers for the EV6 GT is the green, this green color for the calipers right there. Uh, and then we've got uh, it equipped with this press car with uh, Michelin uh, 21 inch wheels. So 255 40ZR21 tires from Michelin. And let's just check the back to make sure that's the same as well. Because sometimes the back is different in performance vehicles. But the wheels are the same here as well, the tyres are the same. Uh, Michelin 25540 ZR21, so exactly the same, yes. Alright, just moving along now to the side of the car. Again, like it's a, they call it a crossover still, but I think it's kind of a hybrid between a sedan and a full-size SUV. Um, and you look at the specs, the, the height is somewhere between that, that, uh, that segment. And it's got that hatchback, sort of fastback runoff too, uh, a bit of a spoiler here, a bit of a lip there as well. Moving around to the back, nice badging, EV6 logo, the new Kia logo which I, I personally quite like, GT badging, and I must say I quite like the matte finish, this is the Moonscape uh, paint option and they're quite nice on oh, the Kia EV6 so well done there Kia, uh, good matte finish. This is the charge port, there we go. Uh, so it's a CCS2 plug, uh, I've seen these before in the EGMP cars, and then DC is covered. That's, that's quite good, I think the DC component should be covered like that. That's quite nice. And then to shut it, just push that like that, charge indicator there on the left. Uh, a few more specs about the EV6 GT, so 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. The GT line's got a range of 484 kilometers, so I, I assume in GT mode, the performance mode is a bit less than that. Uh, seven year warranty as you can see on the windscreen there, on the back windscreen. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, 0 to 100 in 3.5 seconds, which I will be testing of course. Uh, 430 kilowatts of power to enable that. Uh, dual motors. So yeah, all in all, built very much for a uh, performance vehicle, the Kia EV6 GT. Okay, so uh, quickly showing the bucket seats there, another feature of the Kia EV6. Um, watch this as I sink into it. Oh yeah, definitely um, feeling the bucket seat there. Sort of hugs your sides, um, the side supports there, so very much a performance vehicle. Uh, having the bucket seats here on passenger side as well. And I may have forgotten to mention this in my walk around, but check this out old school seat controls. There we go seat back, lift, and that latch for pulling the seat back and forth. That's right, it's not powered. Very interesting. So ladies and gentlemen, a few days have passed since that drive and as you can see, I run the battery down to 1% state of charge. Uh, since the last recharge, which is basically when I picked up this car, uh, we've driven 366.3 kilometers at an efficiency of 19.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, uh, otherwise uh, 194 hours per kilometer. And we've driven for 12 hours and 42 minutes in total. 
And as you can see, uh, there is uh, five kilometers left of range. So you can probably confidently say you can get 370 kilometers out of this battery, this 77.4 kilowatt hour battery in this EV6 GT performance vehicle. And quite possibly even more, because when I was editing this video, I realized that I picked up this car with 98% state of charge. So giving it the benefit of the doubt, if I add an extra 2% to this range, which is approximately 10 kilometers, that brings it to about 380 kilometers of real world range for this EV6 GT. And of course, lots of warnings to ask me to recharge the battery in that time as the uh, battery is dwindling down, starting from about maybe 10% asking me to charge and then drop by drop to 5%, it said uh, charge immediately, uh, find a charging station. And then at 2%, it said basically, uh, yeah, your power has been reduced. So yeah, lots of warnings to uh, make sure you don't get stranded somewhere. Okay, so I probably spent about 90% of the time on normal mode, which is this one here I had on normal mode, uh, probably 5% of the time on eco mode during uh, my learn so far, and probably 5% of the time on GT, uh, just to test out the performance aspect of this vehicle. Okay, so I can confirm the Kia EV6 GT can charge from my Tesla Gen 3 wall connector. Here it is charging away. And there it is plugged in at the charge port, also charging away. And at the car, it's telling me that at 2% state of charge currently, it's going to take seven and a half hours to reach 100%. And uh, getting a charge rate of 11 kilowatts, which is the maximum advertised by this vehicle, which is the full uh, three phase supply from my home and Gen 3 wall connector. Okay, so now that I've shown you it's definitely uh, charging from the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector, I've now set it so that it's scheduled to come on and charge at midnight tonight. That's when it's cheapest for me with the cheap uh, EV charging tariffs from PowerShop in my area. I'll leave a link to the video description below uh, to get those cheap rates from PowerShop. Uh, and also, there it is from the drive cluster. It says waiting to charge. Schedule time is Monday midnight. So that's when the car will start charging. Okay, so we're all done. Let's unplug. So on this occasion, we didn't do a DC fast charging test, but I have done this before in the Kia EV6 GT line and also other uh, eGMP platform cars, including the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Genesis uh, GV60. And I can assure you that the eGMP cars live up to their claim that the 800 volt battery architecture can charge from 20% to 80% in about 18 minutes, which is pretty quick actually, and much faster than other EVs of equivalent price. Okay, so just testing out the V2L or vehicle to load internal uh, for the Kia. There it is plugged in to the Mirth electric scooter, which I've reviewed before. So there is the power box right there. So it's red, it means it's charging. And it's uh, inside the boot of the car. There we go. Right there. Charging away there. And what's interesting was that uh, when the boot lift gate was open, uh, it wasn't charging. So the boot gate must be shut for it to be charging. Okay, so we're optimizing battery temperature. I've been doing this for the last 15 minutes, so hopefully it will get there. It may not, but we'll see how fast we can go anyway. Oh yeah. Felt that. Woo, that was quick. So this is the uh, 0 to 100 kilometer an hour graph for the Kia EV6 in blue on the left. This is the Tesla Model 3 in red on the right. And this is using the race box device uh, shown on the right hand side of this slide. And as you can see, between the two vehicles, very similar uh, for acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. Obviously, there is a bit of a slope correction as well. Uh, but good to see that both cars can achieve that uh, acceleration in very similar times. Okay, so let's do some comparisons between the Kia EV6 and the Tesla Model 3. The Kia EV6 is 1.4 centimeters shorter in length, but 10.7 centimeters higher and has 2 centimeters more ground clearance. It's also 3.1 centimeters wider and offers 132% more cargo space than Tesla Model 3. Compared to the Tesla Model Y, the Kia EV6 is 7 centimeters shorter in length, 7.4 centimeters lower in height and has 0.7 centimeters less ground clearance, is 9.8 centimeters narrower, and offers 40% less cargo space than Tesla Model Y. If we stay with the comparisons with Tesla Model 3 and Model Y, 
Looking at pricing alone, the Kia EV6 GT in Australia for MSRP before on-road costs is $99,590 at the time of this video, which is more expensive than both the Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y performance, which is where we should make these comparisons in terms of its performance. Acceleration is pretty similar at 3.5 seconds compared to Model 3 3.3 seconds and Model Y 3.7 seconds, but where it really loses ground against Tesla is its efficiency. Even though they all have a similar battery size of 74 to 75 kilowatt hours, the Tesla Model 3 has a claimed WLTP range of 547 kilometers, and Tesla Model Y has a range of 514 kilometers, whereas the Kia EV6 GT only has a claimed WLTP range of 424 kilometers, making it a less efficient car compared to both the Teslas. Kia Australia has told me that there is a six month waiting list for the EV6 Air and longer for the GT Line and GT variants. Okay, so just some final thoughts on the Kia EV6 GT before uh, I return the car today and just referring to my notes here. Uh, pros, yeah, so I love the unique style. It's a head turner. It's been so all week uh, everywhere I've driven. Uh, someone has uh, stopped to look because it is unique currently or at least uh, less uh, common than some other EVs around. So uh, yeah, been uh, interesting seeing the reactions from passerbys. Uh, certainly very expressive in the color scheme. Uh, I actually quite like the, the matte finish as well, the matte paint, the moonscape uh, paint, which you can get stock uh, from Kia. It's certainly very well built. Everything's put together very well. Uh, build quality is excellent. Uh, yeah, if you like your buttons, your dials, this car is for you. It's very tactile compared to other EVs, of course. It's very fast, 3.5 seconds for zero to 100 kilometers an hour. And all the modern conveniences of the car. So yeah, lots of storage, uh, vehicle to load, a sunroof which is powered, Apple CarPlay, if you love all those things, then yeah, this car is great. Uh, of course, it's hard not to make a comparison with Tesla, given that the market leader at the moment. I must say, as we went through, the price is very hard to justify uh, compared to Model 3, Model Y performance. Uh, this car is certainly more expensive than both cars. It's got a similar size battery, but the real world range is uh, lacking and the efficiency therefore is not as good as the Tesla vehicles. Similar acceleration, as you saw in the curve. Um, as with all non-Tesla vehicles that I review, similar concerns, of course. Uh, Tesla has a good app. It's got better software, I feel. It can be updated over time, so it can be improved or tweaked as needed. Um, I don't like the infotainment layout in the Kia or the eGMP in, in general, as you've um, found out in my review, but Luckily, there is Apple CarPlay in the eGMP cars, so you can always use your Apple or Android device uh, to override the infotainment layout in general if you don't like it. Um, also, Tesla, there's no regular service needed. You just book as required as opposed to a regular scheduled uh, servicing for most other EVs. And as I guess for now, uh, Tesla still have access to the uh, supercharger network, say for five locations in Australia currently with their pilot uh, program. Uh, I guess what happens in time, we shall see. But at the moment, it's still easier to drive and road trip in a Tesla where superchargers are available. So in summary, I guess if you want a unique vehicle that's still turning heads at the moment, uh, buy the Kia EV6 uh, that matches the Tesla for speed and acceleration, maybe not in efficiency. Um, and I also do understand not everybody wants a Tesla. Um, and that's fine, you know, whether it for for philosophical reasons or just because they don't like the look of the vehicle, that's fine. So at least there's an alternative here in the Kia uh, with very similar specs, apart from the efficiency. Uh, and of course, if you like a car with more conventional dials, buttons, uh, detailing, storage, vehicle to load, then yes, certainly consider the Kia uh, EV6 for sure. Okay, so yeah, this is the final time I'm driving this vehicle as we return the car back to Kia. And uh, I'll guide you uh, over the Harbour Bridge and then we'll sign off. But for now, you can enjoy driving with me on just the urban roads here in North Sydney and then heading onto the freeway over the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And uh, yeah, at the moment I've just got it on ways. As I said in my final summary that um, I do prefer using Apple CarPlay over the infotainment system. If the native nav had, um, you know, integrated charging ability um, built in, to the stops, then I would probably use it more, or suggest using it more, but given it doesn't have that function anyway, where the charging is separate to the nav, all it does is recommend you uh, stop for charging, rather than pointing out where to stop and how often, um, then in that case I would say just use Waze or, uh, you know, what your favourite mapping device from your phone, whether it be Apple or Android, 
Uh, and also I should let you know too that the Apple, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is not wireless, it is still wired. Just something to note. Let's see there, people still watching the car. Still turning heads. It's certainly a very different to other EVs around currently. And just a note about the suspension as well. I know there's been a lot written about uh, other EVs, for example, the Tesla Model Y suspension, but to be very honest with you, um, this car suspension is very similar. Um, and I think it's a lot to do with also the tyres too. A lot of the new cars have very uh, low profile tyres, including this one, so that could affect suspension as well. So be careful what you read and hear. Uh, I suggest test driving a lot of these cars for yourself if you're thinking of buying. Sure, read the reviews, watch the, t watch the footage, but yeah, I think take a look and experience it for yourself too. Just a word of advice. All right, so there it is, the Sydney Harbour Bridge up ahead as we say goodbye to the Kia EV6. Again, I just want to thank Kia Australia for the loan for the week. Uh, it's been very enjoyable, always driving these cars. Um, and I'm certainly very uh, honoured by the opportunity to review them uh, for you, the viewer. Uh, watching my channel so thank you very much for your support thanks everyone and until the next ludicrous feed video happy charging Thanks for watching everyone.